Yes, so now I can yes. say welcome back to Norway because this is your second interview talking to us here in Norway. So please introduce yourself and tell my students who you are and how we met and the whole history. So I'm Shannon, I come from the UK. Um, I'm currently the reigning Miss Regal World and that is how I met, can I say Pollyanna? Do they know you as Pollyanna? They know me as Pollyanna, yes. I Can you see me? <laughs> Can you see me? No. No, there's no video, just a picture. Let me see. Oh, I can see it's gone again. Oh, I can see you now, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> yes, they do know me as Pollyanna. So here in, in Norway, <laughs> they call me by the first, uh, first name. Oh, do they call all teachers by the first names? Oh, really? Well, they don't here in the UK. <laughs> yeah, so I met Pollyanna through Miss Regal World um, a few years ago and I had an interview, I think it was in 2022, um, and I'm back today as the Queen. And congratulations on your win and um, Thank you. it's wonderful to see you <laughs> as Miss Regal World this year. So, Shannon, my students are studying all about Great Britain and they're learning about England. And what can you tell my students about where you come from and your experiences? So I come from um, Leeds, which is in a place called Yorkshire. Um, I've lived here all my life. So um, I've heard today that Leeds is part of um, a golden triangle or something like that I didn't know about this but it's one of the best places to live in Yorkshire well in the UK apparently and um, so that was news to me but yeah it's just a nice little city and um, I like it because I can go shopping a lot <laughs> I know that some places in the UK um, they don't really have like the city life where I do um, so yeah and the last time when we talked, we talked a little bit about the the royal family and we discussed a few different topics. My students probably will watch that interview as well. So today we'll talk about something different. I want you to tell okay. me about your opinions regarding the prime minister, who is the first person of color to be a prime minister in Great Britain. Can you tell us your opinions? Wait, which prime minister is that? Sorry, Rishi Sunak. Oh, that one. Um, I'm really bad because I actually don't watch the news. Um, I always say that no news is good news. Um, but with Rishi Sunak, I don't. I think a lot of prime ministers they promise things and then they don't follow through with it. So that then sparks a lot of like debate against people within the UK, and then they don't like them. Um, my opinions, I don't, I don't like dislike him, but I don't, I don't really like him. <laughs> I don't like, do you know what I mean? Like, I don't really like hate him, but I don't love him at the same time. I feel like every prime minister has something to offer, and he just didn't follow through with what he said he would. Um, so I am happy that we've got a new one. But I actually didn't know we had a new one. I voted for him, but then I forgot that we actually had a new one until my mum told me the other day. <laughs> so I'm not really heavily into politics either. I just try to know <laughs> the, the information that I have to give my students and all of that. But um, so how do you feel about having a prime minister who is a person of color do you think that has an impact on how people see him or you think that people are more focused on how he is as a prime minister and there's no racial debate or anything related to to the color of his skin um i don't think people have an issue with the color of his skin i think it's just the fact that he's a prime minister um and some of them don't follow through with what like they say they're going to and i think that's what people haven't have more of an issue with um and i think it there was a lot of like debate around uh the people i don't really i don't know if the Im immigrants is that what you call them 
um, that he takes it because obviously they'd let a lot of those people come in and then they was living in hotels free of charge and they was getting like everything paid for but then the people that actually live here like myself we have to go to work we have to pay tax and then we have to pay pay to basically we have to pay to live and pay all these bills but then they was getting it all for free and I think that's what a lot of people had an issue with Yes, the immigration is a huge issue here in Norway as well. So there are very strong opinions on that. And I feel like yeah. in, in the USA as well, in different countries. Yes. All right. So I want to hear from you about an aspect of what we're studying here. There is a chapter on the book that my students are studying that's called, Are You British? So I want you to tell me about mm -hmm. that. When people say, are you British? What would you answer? I definitely say yes. Um, I think a lot of the forms that you have to fill in, like if you're getting a new job or it's like a form from doctors, there's a section on it asking you like, I can't remember what the, like, the wording of it, but it asks you a specific question and I have to put my category is like in the white, white British. I think it says Welsh in there as well. So I don't, so obviously I am in that category. And if someone did ask me, I would say British. Um, just because I live in England and I am British, I wouldn't class myself as like Scottish because I don't have their accent or anything or I wasn't born there. Yes, and um, that's that's interesting too. I interviewed somebody from Scotland and in some aspects of cult cultural aspects, when people think of Great Britain, people who don't know, they would put everyone in one category and they, they wouldn't yeah. know the difference between who's <laughs> from England, who's from Scotland. So what you said is quite interesting for my students to hear from someone who, who is British. So when you, for example, when, when there is like um, a sports game going on and do you like, would you Scotland's playing friends, let's say like that, would you be rooting for them? because you're closer to where you are? Yeah, definitely. So if there's like a football game going on, I always have like favourites. So obviously England are my favourites. I do like Portugal as well. And I think it's just because Ronaldo's on that team. <laughs> um, but then if like we're not in it or um, there's a game, like you said, with France and Scotland, I would always go to like Scotland just because it is still in the United Kingdom. We're just like in our separate, like my boyfriend actually had to learn me about that because I was like, why are they not all English? <laughs> so he was learning me about that like a year ago. Yes, and, and I, I feel like there is people from other countries don't really know all of it like geographically you're all in the British Isles yeah. but you are all separate countries so that's what what I'm teaching them at the moment so that's interesting that you point it out because mm -hmm. it can be confusing so um what is your favorite city in um in England and if you could tell my students this is a place where you should go to visit um, I've been to a few different cities and I've been to like the seaside towns. I go to more cities that are near where I live um, because even though I'm in a country of like the likes of London, it is a four hour drive away from where I live. Um, so I don't go there that often. But if they were to visit a place in the UK, I'd definitely say London, just with it being um the capital of England it's got a lot more to see rather than one of the little cities um yeah there's loads to see there there's always people that are exploring and um, that have come from other countries as well and there's just so much that goes on in there in particular I've only ever been once believe it or not but <laughs> um even it was an eye-opener to me to see like the palace and stuff now talk about your journey in in this pageant where we met and I feel like it's such a fantastic opportunity and not only for because a lot of people think okay oh it's a beauty pageant but they don't realize how much culture goes into it and how many people from different countries that we meet and how much we learn yeah. and grow as a person doing it so can you talk about your pageant journey? Yeah, so I started pageants in 2017, I think it was. Um, I was really shy. 
um really quiet if I had to ring like the doctors or something I'd literally just get my mum to do it because I was so scared of doing it um and then we came across a teen pageant called Miss Teen Great Britain which is based here in the UK um and it was all for teenagers so I think it starts from 13 or somewhere around that age and it goes to 19 um so I started in that pageant um and it really helped with my confidence um I became a lot more confident from it and I think from that moment I was just like I love the pageant industry I've met so many friends so I carried on doing them um I did a I used to take a year out so I could like study at college and stuff because I was still studying at the time and then I so I took a year out I then went back into them and I think Covid hit after my second pageant so that's when <laughs> my pageant I didn't take a year out after that I just kept doing them um but I then came across Miss Regal World I heard about it through a friend that I'd met at one of my pageants and um, she was in it and I thought oh what's this about so I had a look at it um, and was in the middle of lockdown and I wanted something fun to do so I went ahead and entered it um, I entered it with my sister my sister's not into pageants but she took part in that one with me um, and it was just a fun experience and I decided that when it came back a year later I'd like to continue my journey within Miss Regal world I just loved everything about it and one thing I liked in particular was it was an international level pageant but from the comfort of your own home and um that just fit in with my lifestyle because the job that I do I work in the aviation industry so my hours are not nine to five I don't work Monday to Friday I literally work whenever I'm rostered to go to work um so it fit nicely in with what I my job um I didn't have to travel anywhere I didn't have to spend loads of money and I could do it from the comfort of my own home so then I can't remember what year it was but I met Pollyanna in Miss Regal world and the sisterhood that is created through that pageant in particular is just amazing I've met so many friends who I still stay in contact with um do you know Janice as well um she she always stays in contact with me I absolutely adore her um and yeah I went back I think um the pageant were pulled for a year while the director focused on family things and then it came back I think it was this year it came back this year and um I did it and then I was crowned Miss Regal World <laughs> and I think it's fantastic that we get to to compete and I feel like every time you compete then you become better and you learn yeah. more and you meet more people and you and your techniques and um you you learn so much from the people and I think that you're right like the fact that you're in your own home but you are internationally traveling virtually <laughs> and getting to know people so it's amazing well, Shannon, thank you so very much for this. Um, my students will definitely appreciate your interview. For them, it's very important that they hear a real person from England and how they talk, because what we have, we have audio files that they listen to and they're actors trying to do an accent. But when you speak, that's how you speak. So they, they get to, to learn and to listen to you and learn from you. So thank you so much for this. I will keep the video and I will give you a link to it so you can use it as well. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you for having me. Yes, and we'll stay in touch. We will do, yeah. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.